Um, I know she'll be on it, so uh, uh, we'll wait on Penny. Paul Tolley, and Paul said uh, he'll be on at eight. Do I see Paul Tolley yet? Yeah, I'm on it. Okay, yeah, Paul. Oh, that's Paul Foley. But I haven't seen Paul Tolley and uh, Penny Rashid yet, but both said they'll be on. Uh, Michael is here, so um, that's where we are. And uh, uh, for Stuart Kaiser on voting, uh, Maria, Leon, uh, John, uh, Kevin, thank you, Joe. Uh, with my screen, it's hard to say. Is there anyone else that's missing? Hey, Bill, I have a hard stop at nine. Okay. okay. So if you yeah, get, you guys, I'll drop off if you keep going. So just so you know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, were there any uh, questions coming in, Joe? No questions. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, meeting minutes, did everyone get the minutes from the May 12th meeting? Have a chance to look at them? Yes. Any corrections? No. Motion to approve? Yes. Second. Well, All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Brian. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Great. Good. Good, good, good. Well, um, on this uh, on this quest for the uh, for the police building, or the police, uh, uh, there's Penny. Uh, we uh, we charged you with another um, with another question, and I see you've done your usual wonderful job and uh, uh, given us a um, something to uh, to chew on. Why don't you uh, take the meeting here? Sure, and. Uh... Just, uh, I'll share the screen if I can and show you the set of plans that we put together on this, on this new option. I think you've all had these um, to review, but I think this gives me an opportunity to just to tell you some of the thought process that went into uh, our, our next effort. This is the existing site. So this is not anything new. This is something you're familiar with, but I, I wanted to utilize this existing site plan to show you some uh, changes that I've made just globally on the site. Uh, the, the way the existing building works and works with the ambulance uh, facility um, has a certain circulation pattern that has been established and the circulation pattern throughout the site currently is entering the facility off of South Avenue to the north, entering the site for public and for emergency vehicles, traveling either through the um, western part for public parking and then circulating down and around and through and utilizing the south curb cut only for exiting. You see the area of the addition, the uh, addition to the rear being the uh, bays to the north and the addition to the south. So we, we took the direction that Joe gave us. I think it came from the building committee, but kind of a, a different approach because you've already seen the approach that we've taken if we just keep the existing building. The one of the directives was to keep the square footage around 28,000 square feet. Uh, it's just interesting to note the existing building is around 28,000 square feet. So we're not looking to really add square footage to what you have here, but we're trying to make a marked improvement to the plan. And if there was a marked improvement to the plan, is it worth the expense of going ahead with that renovation with the, uh, with the new plan concept? So I really took a, a, a wide approach to this to say, let's not just look at the building, let's look at the site. There was a certain number of parking spaces that were being requested. And so one of the, the major moves that I made on the site was I altered the circulation pattern. And with the proposed site, the building addition to the rear is a two-story addition, which now spreads north to south a little longer in two stories. I have some parking and some Sally Port bays that go beyond that. But in order to make all of this, in my opinion, work better and improve the site conditions is I've reversed the circulation pattern on the site. 
the south entrance, south curb cut now is your entry to the site. So this is entry for public and entry for all fleet vehicles and EMS is now changing the, the pattern to create this as the entrance to the site. Public would now circulate north and have parking, which has now been reversed in its direction to create angled parking. And then it's a new curb cut to the north. We're eliminating the crossover to the- hey, Let me just interrupt to make sure everyone's on mute right now. I, I think a couple of people aren't on mute. So I'll just, one more time. Thank you. So we've created a new curb cut. This is a new curb cut does not exist. We've eliminated the cut through to the South Avenue apartments. So that curb cut to the North remains. but no longer is tied to the egress path of the police facility. I have maintained an emergency egress at this location. So there is a second way off the site, but this is for egress only and gets a second means of egress off the site and does give people another opportunity to get back to South Avenue. But the primary circulation pattern throughout the site now is in a it's in a counterclockwise motion. Now, why did I do this? I did this for a couple of reasons. One is I'll get to the police facility, but before I get to the police facility circulation, it also has to do with the ambulance facility and the EMS circulation. So if you have an ambulance that is exiting the site, they're facing out of the bay. Currently, the ambulance comes out of the bay and has to do a bunch of maneuvering and K-turning in this location to then turn and get the ambulance oriented to this south curb cut. If the ambulance is returning, currently the ambulance returns into the South Avenue apartment, comes across, comes onto the site and now is facing the bays, which they now have to do a lot of maneuvering to turn this ambulance around to get it back into the bay. And they, they want it back into the bay for a certain reason. With this orientation now, the ambulances exit the, app, the bays and then circulate around the building, continuing to face forward and then exit out onto South Avenue. Returning, they come off the, the South Curb Cut, they come down and then now oriented to just back into the bay. So it eliminates the process of turning and K-turning and uh, maneuvering these ambulances out of the ambulance facility. So that's one issue that I wanted to note. The second issue is on the site, there's more maneuvering space in this area. So turning for police vehicles and maneuvering into bays gives you more distance on the south side of the building than you see the tight conditions to the north. If I was to use this as the entry point, I have very tight turns trying to get into these current bays and anything else would create more conflicts with a very narrow path that's created. I say narrow, but it, it's plenty suitable for egress. It's plenty suitable for, for EMS. It's just not that suitable for trying to make turning radiuses into bays. So I've increased that distance and, and utilized the site to its advantage to the south with all of the space that we have. What it does do is if we were to take the current plan and the current site configuration and just say, let's reverse that. So we'll take the entry, which is the exit and we'll make it the entry. We'll have the, the public come through and we'll have the public egress onto South Avenue. That's possible. But with the reverse circulation, if I was to take the ambulance and try to get the ambulance through and then exit, the ambulances would then be crossing over entering traffic at this location. And if I was to reverse the circulation for police vehicles, police vehicles would have to cross over entering traffic to the apartments and the day center and the South Avenue cottage. So crossing over on an exit, trying to make the other public entrance this creates a real serious traffic condition 
that I want to eliminate at this current north curb cut. So that's the reason why I'm making police independent, its own curb cut, its own exit. We do have access control, but it's a free exit gate. So any vehicle approaching this gate, the gate opens. And it just restricts the, the public from making a right-hand turn when they're exiting. They only exit on the left-hand turn. So fundamentally shifting everything on the site. You had asked us to try to get 75 parking spaces on the site. Uh, we have uh, a chart. Let me go back. Let me, we have a chart that shows we have 72 plus 2. So we're at 74. We're not at 75. But we do have 16 spaces, which is assigned to a carport. We have 22 spaces that is assigned for police fleet and other police staff use. We have the lower lot, which is I'm taking from the crosswalk south. We have 22 spaces. And I've created a three car uh, impound lot at the end of this, which would be fenced and gated and secured and sur have surveillance on it for, for impounding vehicles. The comparing to existing, uh, there's some stairs that go from the lower lot to the upper lot. And we had been utilizing the spaces that are shown from the driveway south. We have been utilizing those as staff, potentially police staff parking. All I've done is move the stairs and align the stairs now with the sidewalk and the entry to the South Avenue Cottage. So that still allows 22 spaces assigned past the, the crosswalk for police use. I'm leaving 16 spaces for daycare. So 16 spaces is what's happening above the crosswalk. And I still have seven spaces assigned to the ambulance facility, and those are not included in the police department count. So I've, I've re assigned seven spaces for the ambulance within this calculation. Where we do cut down on some parking is public. We've gone down to nine spaces plus two handicapped, and that's because we're, we're utilizing this new egress curb cut. If I go back, there's more, there's 15 plus two on the public side. That 15 plus two goes down to nine plus two. Uh, I do, and I am aware that the church has some overflow capacity for public or, or any um, community use. So I'm hoping that that could offset a, a little loss in the public parking side. Uh, realizing that the need there for, the, for more normal daytime activity is probably adequate at, at nine. It's just when you're utilizing more of your community areas for, for events or community meetings or, or public meetings. So we would have access controlled for anything beyond controlling all the parking, controlling all the cars that are in this rear upper lot. We're not controlling or having any access control to the staff areas to the lower lot. And I assume, Brian, that the parking lanes uh, directly behind the building uh, or would be oriented the other way, right? To go directly with the uh, traffic no. here. No. No. Okay. The way we have this oriented is, is popular with police facilities. Stanford Police has been doing this for quite some time. And if police vehicles come back into the lot, police vehicles will all be backing into these spaces. The, the reason why we have them backing into these spaces is because then for response, they're all facing forward and they are all ready for a response out. The other reason why we want them only backing into these spaces is if I have an ambulance that's coming through here on a response, I want the drivers to see the ambulances and not be backing out into spaces and causing more of a conflict with the path for the, for the ambulance. So these have been adjusted to angled parking and angled parking for back in only. On the public side, it's, it's drive in back out. And that's what these are arranged for. This, this curb cut gives you a nice angle approach for drive in back out and then continuing on uh, in the path of, of exit. 
So the plans that I had forwarded, I think I had these as 90 degree parking. We did have an opportunity to talk to the police department this week about it. And this is the only shift that I've made to the plans. I haven't altered them in any other way other than we did discuss the potential for this being a back in drive out potential at, at these spaces and it, it made sense. So we made that shift. So question Brian. that said. Question Brian. Yes. How do you park under the park car carport? Good question. We have 16 spaces here. These are for uh, vehicles that are patrol vehicles, which we're assuming are more mobile. I mean, they're not sitting there for, for uh, all of the day. These are patrol cars that come back at shift change and then, and then leave the site again. So the vehicles that are coming back would be going in this, this circulation path and would be parking and driving to the front. If, if, the, if the bays are open, they would drive to the front. Any second vehicle would be driving to the rear. And then that gives you the option, the vehicles in the front would drive through and drive out. Any vehicles to the rear, if there's nothing in front of them, could continue to drive forward through this lane and out. Or if there's a car that is in front of them, they would need to back out and then continue forward. So it gives you the option. I have 24 feet, which is the distance from the carport to the angled parking. So at 24 feet, that's actually enough for two lane traffic. And I have 24 feet from the front of parking to the building, which is actually sized for two direct two way traffic. We're only asking this to accommodate one one way traffic. So exiting would be through the covered area and then back out onto the street. Uh, if there's some conflicts there, if all of the back rows were accommodated, say all the back rows have vehicles in them and all the front rows are empty. Now you have a conflict that you can't drive through and can't drive in. If that was to happen, you still have the option to drive in and to back into one of these spaces uh, and get to these spaces through this direction. It's, it's only a short distance. So I don't think you'll have conflicts with, with vehicles. I think this can all be arranged and organized through the police department on how they're gonna use this. We did talk about these two spaces being the most difficult to actually access into and egress out of. So if these two spaces may be vehicles that remain covered and, and not are mobile are not mobile or they take other things that may want covering like light towers or trailers or something else that they want to have recharged under cover uh, and utilize it the best they can for these two spaces everything else is is easily accessed either from the parking drive area or the covered canopy area So I want to jump to the plan. Looking at the plan, I then asked myself, what's the, what's the best utilization of the building? The current building has bearing walls and is bearing wall constructed. And the bearing walls on the building are the exterior walls, the stair walls, the corridor walls are all bearing walls. So the stairs, and you see the dark uh, corridor walls. When they put the last addition on, they extended, the bearing wall construction extends to this location. They've now eliminated the bearing wall and put two columns in, one column here and one column here. And then they've eliminated the bearing wall up to this location. So from, here to here, all I have to deal with are two columns. I can continue to take out bearing wall if that makes any sense. But in this case, it, it, it didn't make sense in my plan to eliminate more bearing walls. Just utilize the opening that's existing from this location down to this location. The other thing that was brought up was the level change from the 
uh, vertical corridor to the horizontal corridor. It's about two feet. It did uh, create some concern with lockers and lockers that were in the area of what I'm showing as physical training. So we took the approach of lowering the slab in the areas of these locker rooms and lowering the slab through those spaces by two feet. Now, if I take a bearing wall and I try to remove the slab and lower it two feet, I have the potential to now need to underpin this bearing wall. But what I've done is if I go down two feet and I go over two feet, I've created a 45 degree angle of repose for the footings that are under this bearing wall. So that's why there's this two foot gap shown between the bearing wall and new construction wall. It's two feet away. So at two feet away and two feet down, I then potentially don't have to do any underpinning on these existing bearing walls. What I have created is a two foot gap, but also a plumbing chase. Within that two foot gap, I do have plumbing and a plumbing wall for both the female locker room and the male locker room. So now everything in this corridor is two feet down. I've, instead of the ramp, I have a stair. And for handicapped accessibility, I have a lift, which then can get you that two foot difference for handicapped accessibility between lower corridor, get on the lift and go up two feet to get to the upper corridor, uh, or take the stairs for two feet. So wanting to maintain handicapped accessibility through this facility, just with the use of a lift. We've talked about male and female lockers. What's the right number? What's the right combination? Um, we've shown for a department projected at 45, we've shown 48 male lockers. So I know I've satisfied, if you're a 100% male department, I now have a locker for everyone up to 48 officers. I've arranged those lockers, which are three foot wide, seven and a half feet tall, double door, uh, boot drawer, electrical, mechanical ventilation, three sinks, two urinals, three toilets, three showers along the plumbing wall. I've oriented the vestibules opposite each other for male and female. So the corridor serves as a patrol corridor, access to male and female locker rooms. And on the female side, I've shown 21 lockers in this area. We've gone between 10 lockers, 13 lockers, 14 lockers, what's the right number of lockers? The capacity here is 21. Whether you buy and install all 21 is up to you, but this brings the percentage of female up to about over 40% of a female department. So, so with this, you're gonna over, you're gonna have uh, substantially more lockers than we do on the force, assuming we don't increase the size of the force. Well, in North Haven, we made space for lockers and we never put in the extra lockers. So you have the flexibility to say, what's the right number? Maybe only buy so many or have future capacity for more or just take the approach where we're gonna install 21. It, it accommodates 21. If you need more lockers than 21, I've located a general storage room right next to it. So that means this is your wall that comes down and lockers can get expanded into this area if you go 50% female to male. But we're seeing that 25% is, is probably a goal, 30% would be great, um, but you have capacity here up to 40%. So it's flexibility is what I'm trying to portray in how many lockers you want to feel appropriate for female, but the capacity is there. We put in four toilets, we put in two sinks, we have one shower. Uh, so there's expandability, even if you want to expand another shower and reduce lockers. But I just gave you a, a, a possible scenario with-, hey, with hey, 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 Brian, just one question, sorry. Yes. I don't I don't get the math to get to 40%. You have 48 male lockers and 21 female lockers. That comes up to more like 30% for me. 45 is the uh, projected. 
so for men, right? 45 total sworn. So wait, how many, how many so total? The problem is, uh, uh, Michael, that what he did is he added extra lockers in the men's side for double lockers for special teams. Uh, so there are far more lockers than sworn officers. There's only 45 sworn officers. 47. 47 sworn officers. Oh, excuse me, 47. So that's where they, that's where he got the, the yeah, 21. So, so, so 21 it, women lockers. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. If I do 47 sworn officers, 21 is a 44%. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so total 47 lockers. I'm sorry, right. I, I thought you meant 47 male lockers and 21 female lockers. Well, that's what I am showing. I, I'm showing a capacity of 48 male. The department is only projected to go to 47 sworn. But okay. I don't know what you the- have way more lockers than you I have. I have adequate lockers, depending on what's your male, female, but what other departments have done is if you're on a special assignment, if you have a, uh, let's say you're on a SWAT team, emergency response team, you may get two lockers. You may get one for your patrol use and you may get one for special, a special need, special operation. So hey, just, just for some clarity too, we have 47 sworn, three command staff don't take up lockers, but also with the male and females, we don't know what the ratio will be in the future, male to female. That's that's what we're struggling against right now. We have more female officers than we have lockers currently. So we just won't know what the future ratio will be male to female. Right, right. But you're going to have about 68, 69 lockers is what you're saying. Yes, this total. Is yes, total. Okay, thank you. We've, we've tried to take the assets of the existing building and use it to its greatest advantage. While we're still showing electrical switch gear in the same space, water meter room in the space, same space, boiler room in the same space, elevator, elevator lobby. We aren't saying that these need to be all existing equipment, but we're saying it's gonna be the same utility path. Whether you wanna bring in new electrical service, we're bringing new electrical service into the existing electrical room. Water service, if you wanna bring in new water service, we're just saying bring it to the same location. And for boilers, this is where the boiler uh, network originates from. So we could replace the boilers. Uh, we'll just leave them in its current location. Seems to be the greatest use uh, and the greatest asset to maintain those spaces. We have SRT storage. The gun cleaning and armory has been enlarged from the last plan but shown in this location. And we've converted all of the existing uh, former firing range into a large physical training room. We would have the full ceiling height in there for physical training. Uh, we would just paint out the ceiling. We would use that space for uh, equipment and physical fitness uh, area. That right now is, is in the corridor. So you can compare what you're currently using for physical training and then seeing how we're expanding that about fourfold into the uh, space that's on the lower level. And it's in close proximity to the locker rooms. So from locker rooms to physical training is, is a uh, convenient patrol area or for use for the department in the lower level. Now, Brian, yeah. Brian was in the physical uh, training with um, taking out, painting out the ceiling, how high would the ceilings be then? Eight feet. It would be enough for uh, overhead uh, exercising and stationary equipment, cardio equipment, all would fit within that space at eight feet. Okay. Thank you. So what are we gonna do with the new addition? The new addition actually does not extend out as far as the current addition but I have a new addition that spans almost as wide as the existing building. It, for comparison, the front of these bays is, is the same front of the current bays, but these are not the existing bays. We've taken down everything in the back so we can rebuild the bays and we can rebuild this back addition. The two bays at the top, uh, as I said, would be done, designed for storage but these have limited heights on the doors because I have a floor above these now. 
and I have a raised grade on the outside. So the, the, the heights on these overhead doors into these two storage bays, the heights would be only about nine feet. Um, so you could get a vehicle in here if you wanna put a vehicle in here, or you can use it for other purposes for storage, anything getting in a, a normal sized overhead door. We have bulk evidence storage leading to the exterior. We have cert storage leading to the exterior. The concept being everything under this dotted line is covered. So if you wanna bring a, a pickup truck or a vehicle in here and you can load and unload for bulk evidence, you can load and unload for cert storage, you can then be on your way and then have everything under cover. The main staff entry point is similar to where it is now because it's at the end of the corridor, but we've brought the vestibule and brought a stair into that vestibule so people could be into the building and directly up the stairs. And you'll see on the upper floor how that aids in response time because from upper floor, you could come down the stairs directly out and directly to vehicles. Brian, uh, on, the, on the two bays, are those um, under HVAC or? Are those like regular garage? They are heated and ventilated. Thanks. Uh, small union office and storage is in this location. The rest of the orange is your Sally Port and prisoner processing. We have accomplished and, and shown a drive through Sally Port configuration. And if you look at this Sally Port configuration and you go back to the site plan, you can see how you now have maneuverability at that location for entry into the Sally Port. Actually, when you're coming onto the site and you're coming down, you have the ability to turn into the Sally Port and turning left into a Sally Port, believe it or not, is the preferred approach to a Sally Port because you're turning on the driver's side. You're not turning a right turn across the driver's side. So any of these entrances into these bays are all left-hand turns into these bays. The line that you see in the Sally Port at this location is the line between the second floor addition and to the right to the left and no, no addition to the right. So from the left of this line, I probably only have an 11 foot ceiling. But to the right of this line, I am unlimited in what my ceiling height needs to be because I don't have any second floor additions over this, these rest of these bays. So if you want a 14 foot high door on this Sally port so you can drive a truck through it, a bus through it, anything you want through it, you can get up to a 14 foot high door. Typically these are around 12 foot high, at least uh, for ambulances uh, coming through. But these are all high bays. This Sally port, this utility bay, this utility bay. We discussed with the police department of the flexibility of these three bays being high bays. These could, this could be a two bay Sally port. What I've shown here is just a division, but that division could be an overhead wire mesh. It could be nothing. It could be a two bay open Sally port. This partition wall could be a wall. It could be another, again, a retractable screen. Uh, you could open this up to three bays wide. You have the ability, if you want to put a lift in here, to lift a car and get under a car. You have the ability with this bay to use it for specialty vehicles. I, I could go on and on about potentials, but the potential here is for up to a three bay, high bay, large vehicle storage and your primary Sally Port Bay would be this one in orange. It would lead into booking areas and, and prisoner processing. You'd have two booking rooms, toilet shower. The, the detainee would be brought into prisoner processing, put into one of these booking rooms. So each booking room is for an individual detainee, not multiples. The officer would then be able to come around to the other side of the booking room to a computer and have safe uh, processing through the windows for each one of these individually. There's a wall between them. This is all Mason reconstruction. So if you have two people being booked at the same time, they have no sight uh, between the two of them. 
they have no way to access each other. And the officers are safe on the outside of those, those rooms. The officers never really go into these booking areas. They uh, can put somebody in here in handcuffs. They could take them out in handcuffs. So the officers find this to be a tremendous asset, very safe condition. There is an APHIS machine if to, to do fingerprinting. There's a breathalyzer for intox. There's a bench that's next to the breathalyzer. We have an interview space, so you can do some, some interviewing within the prisoner processing area. We've provided five cells, but we've contained, provided three containment areas. Cell corridor here for one, two, three is one containment area. So you have three independent cells here in one containment area. You have cell number four, which is an isolation cell. And you have cell number five, which is also an isolation cell, which is handicapped accessible. So each one of these, uh, while they're adjacent, they have sight and sound separation between four and five, and there's sight and sound separation between one, two, and three. So in that configuration, you can detain male, female, and juvenile in this contained area depending on what your occupants are and, and what the, the gender is. Uh, whether you wanna split out male and male, you can also do that. They're not labeled as female or male, they're just labeled as detention cells. And the department then has the ability to isolate and segregate whoever they have there. Any question? Uh, as I said, this dotted line is all covered. We have 16 spaces which are covered. I did provide some natural light down into this entry area. So bringing some solar down into, so it's not just all dark under that area. A skylight just to bring some light down at the end of the corridor at the exit. And uh, uh, that aids also with the exiting of the Sally Port and then exiting, take a left and then back out to South Avenue. Any questions on this floor be before I jump to the upper floor? Okay, I'm gonna jump just in the, just to uh, save on time. Main floor. The benefit of this plan on the main floor is I have more square footage that I can utilize. The current configuration, I can't build over the current bays because the ceilings height on the bays does not align with the floor level of the main level. In this arrangement, I can design the bays so I can build over them. I can also design the bays for the load of high density shelving. On this lower area, I was utilizing this over the physical training, which was in the old plan. I didn't have any uh, building area over that physical training. It, physical training was just gonna be a one story addition. Now it goes two stories, it follows the line of the lower floor. That being said, I think there are some assets in your existing building that can be maintained. One is the dispatch center on orienta oriented to the main entrance. I think it works. I think it's still just been renovated. I, I don't see the need to spend money in making any shifts to that. Uh, I think the public expects to see dispatch as the public uh, answering point. Record stays where it is. Um, the training classroom and kitchenette stays where it is. The elevator stays where it is. The lobby does get revised with new handicapped public restrooms. But in this configuration, I maintain the separate EOC, small meeting room to the south, and a larger training classroom and kitchenette to the north. I think this configuration gives the department two potential options for, for meeting space. It gives the department the option to utilize an EOC at the same time they're utilizing the other classroom for other uh, purposes during any natural disaster or any other event. If the EOC is operating, it's separated off from the rest of the training classroom. It gives the department the option for utilizing these spaces as they see fit for any public use or any public outside agencies that wanna come into these spaces. It gives another public interview space 
to the south, which could be utilized for interview, or it could be used to support the EOC if that EOC function is operating. The other areas in yellow are permitting and interview spaces. So taking public in for public permits, you see we've added a door. So this corridor is a really a semi-private, semi-public corridor, but any public coming into the building for permitting or interviewing, they really have limited access to where else they can go other than back out to the lobby. So I think the, I see this building working and, and taking advantage of what's, what the assets currently are. Where this floor needs to get supported is on more patrol space. So the blue areas that I have in the new addition, two lieutenant's offices, quartermaster storage, it provides an opportunity for an expanded day room, kitchen, break room. Uh, it gives you the potential for a roll call room, uh, another briefing area. Patrol sergeants would be to the rear, uh, to the north. But the roll call and day room, these are these are utilized, roll calls utilized at, at shift change, but is would be not fully utilized at other parts of the day. So circulating through these spaces to get to sergeants, sergeants have access out to roll call, circulating through de the day room as needed for patrol, whether they're in the day room or whether they go to roll call, whether they're in report writing, this becomes a real hub for patrol activity not just a shift change, but at all parts of the day for patrol, for lieutenants, access to other parts of the building. And this is the stair that we talked about. So anybody on this floor responding or needing to respond to vehicles would have an access into the stair, directly down the stairs, into that vestibule and right out to the vehicles. So it could be anybody on this floor needing access down and out. Um, but that's, that's primarily arranged for this patrol uh, use and patrol staff down and out. The floor is supported by new handicapped accessible male and female bathrooms that supports also the need for dispatchers. Your existing bathroom would remain, but we could have other support uh, for bathrooms right near there. This would also support the patrol and other department needs on that floor. Custodial closet for that floor. And in the green is all of your evidence storage, evidence receiving is now adjacent to your evidence and property clerk. So this would be an office space for the clerk. Uh, this is an area where staff could come in for evidence receiving, processing, put evidence into double-sided uh, lockers. Uh, evidence could get further processed and cataloged and put into high density shelving for high density needs. As they say, this high density shelving is a very heavy uh, concern. The weight on this, we designed the, the, the flooring now to support the weight of this uh, high density shelving on an upper floor. Another thing to note is now I have all of this covered carport area and I'm not utilizing it for anything. And I think with a, a large, use would be you have a large flat area now for solar panels. You also have the high bay sally port and utility bays, which gives you more support for solar panels. So this whole back end of the building could support photovoltaic uh, needs or desires of the town on this entire flat area. As we're talking about solar panels, I did bring some solar down through a skylight to that area below. But if I go up one floor, I think we have a roof area here, which is the roof of my two-story addition. But I believe this roof area is gonna be mostly mechanical units. So I need new mechanical for the two-story addition, but I also can be putting condensers and mechanical equipment on this roof to support the current facility, because we're gonna be bringing in new mechanicals to the entire uh, existing building. So if, if I can have mechanical space on this roof, it allows the lower roof to be free of all that and really give some Southern exposure for um, solar capacity to support any uh, electrical needs in the department. 
On the upper floor, you've seen it before, it's the same upper floor as you had before. I didn't make any revisions to the upper floor. It's the same administrative area, detective area, defensive tactics, and video simulation. Elevator access from the main lobby brings you up to the corridor, which is just directly off the elevator. You have access directly into public waiting for the administrative area. You also have uh, public access if the detective bureau wants to bring anybody up to this floor for the needs of the detective bureau. But you, we have another door in the corridor here. The bathrooms, public would have access to bathrooms on this floor, but public would not ha have any access beyond this door. So the rest of the corridor, the rest of the, the space is restricted access to staff only. Um, administration can come in and out through this door. So they don't, administration doesn't even need to be in this area of the corridor. Um, if you wanna bring public up for a meeting, another uh, event or tactical planning, you have a large conference room, tactical planning room that's off of this kind of semi-public, semi-private corridor. Anybody getting on this elevator would have to be allowed onto the elevator on the lobby side. So the public lobby, the public cannot just walk in this building and get on the elevator. Dispatchers would have to call that car, allow them onto the car, that no one would be coming off this elevator unannounced so that, that anybody up here, which would be administrative reception or detectives would be notified that there's somebody coming up on the elevator. That's why we've put some glass from the elevator lobby into the administrative reception. There's some oversight of, of this elevator lobby. So that's how the circulation works. I think the uh, separation between public private, uh, public staff, and between staff and detainees is all, is all working the way it should. New windows, re, uh, renovate the exterior, new mechanicals, and we could extend that all the way to new utilities. If you want to bring those into the building, uh, you have a decision to do that or not. Um, so Brian, I know your uh, time is uh, precious here. Are there any uh, questions for Brian? I just want to say, I, I think this is a fabulous design, really outstanding. Well done, Brian. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, Brian, I have a question kind of following up on uh, we, what we discussed the other day. I do think that those 16 cover spaces, the uh, egress and ingress are uh, challenging. I think we need to maybe refine that a little bit and it, it could be very difficult to, to use that space. I'd be happy to talk more about it. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Brian? Uh, Brian, if, if you were going to just summarize uh, what you get in this plan versus the prior plan that you did. Um, well, I have my ideas, but you, you've studied it. Could you like give us the, the you know, four or five key key advantages? Um, to um, taking this approach for the police so that we set them up well for the future. Yeah, it's like David Letterman's top 10, right? Exactly. Just, maybe I'll just do top five though. Um, okay. As far as the site, I think site circulation is a key on this plan. And do you wanna reorient the circulation path to its advantages for both the police department and the EMS? This plan gives you that opportunity um, to make a better site circulation pattern. The addition, obviously being new construction, gives you the ability to do some things that the existing footprint doesn't allow. Um, and within that, let me, let me go, within that, you get a total of five bays in this plan. We were asked to provide four bays and I provided five bays. Those bays I think are now designed for better utilization being three of them are high bays with uh, really unlimited height and, and no height restrictions. Two of the bays have some height restrictions but storage in these 
PDs is always critical to provide. There's never enough storage. And, and providing five bays is, is something that I think has got to be in the top five. Um, finally, answering the capacity of the locker rooms is, is also in that list. And utilizing the lockers in a depressed slab area so you can get increased height in all of your locker rooms is is got to be part of that top five i think the uh upper floor if i go to the patrol area this is just more square footage dedicated to the patrol um, on this main floor i think you have a much improved day room uh, while your roll call briefing room is not really any larger in size it functions i think much better than the current space. So I think the flow and, and path and, and patrol is much improved in this plan. So I think those are the really the differences between the earlier plan and, and it, do you wanna spend more to get this plan? That's what you're spending more to get in, in uh, the difference of the two. And Brian, what is, is, what approximately is the differential in cost? Uh, I'm not the the guy to answer the cost okay. question. Okay. Clear to say it's probably running four to five. You can say four to six, depending on what assumptions you're making on site prep and things like that. Brian has to uh, go through the assumptions, uh, you know, in fairness to all these guys. But when you say uh, call a town hall versus uh, Brian's original uh, of you, you know, you could call it five-ish million difference delta. So, so, so what, what would the number be there, Bill? Well, um, if you take out, uh, these are basically are running 18 million, not including soft costs, um, and but, but including some contingencies. Uh, soft costs, Joe, right, 35, 30% at it. And, um, and then also in the total project cost, we have to remember that the, the, the total project cost we're going to take to the town bodies will include a, uh, a training range, uh, even though we do not currently have a plan for that, uh, but to make sure that it doesn't get lost uh, in, the, in the model, we want to keep that, uh, uh, that number uh, to call it a two and a half million dollar holding place, whether it costs that much or whether we go with another municipality, it would be less, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, some kind of a holding number for that, which gets you to 25 ish, 27 ish, um, if you include, you know, including the, uh, including the range. Okay. So, so in the net of that description, I think, goes back to Bill said it's about. A four to six billion dollar delta between using the old uh, envelope versus the improved envelope, as Brian just outlined it. Mm -hmm. So, in the range of, of uh, twenty to thirty percent for the uh, for the the additional capability and, fu and functional improvements in the right. larger functional right functional improvements plus um, you know half a new building. You know when you really uh, when you get really down to it, and also uh, the half where dare I say the rubber meets the road a little more uh, importantly, right? The solid port is all about safety. Uh, uh, we want uh, you know we want to make sure that where bad things can happen, we have a uh, uh, a state of the art uh, situation to protect our officers and uh, protect everyone. Anything else for uh, Brian before we, uh, uh, you know, let him go? And uh, Brian, you'll be available for any questions that may come up uh, uh, later on this week, right? Maybe uh, we can have one person uh, designate, let's say it's Jim, to pass any questions that any one in the committee or the police department has to you so that uh, you have a point of contact to, uh, you know, answer them all at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I did get an email from Joe from the cost estimator yesterday and I haven't even opened it to really digest it. So I know that you want some involvement from me on that also. Well, I think there are some site plan numbers in there that are, um, you know, a little uh, up in the air, if you say, um, but uh, again, we're, uh, we're still using uh, 
broad broad numbers. And so, uh, uh, but we want to give you the opportunity to look at it, obviously, before we start uh, blasting out as, you know, that's the number. Okay. One, com one comment, Brian, back on the site plan, I don't think you mentioned it in this, this presentation, but uh, uh, the uh, this row of parking place with the diagonals behind the covered area is uh, accomplished by putting a retaining wall in and uh, reclaiming uh, uh, extra space. And it makes it, it makes it possible to have that driveway be 24 foot wide and not impinge on any other use of, of the site. And it, it's just a simple unit retaining wall with a guardrail. Um, so we do have some grass area left between the retaining wall and the lower lot. Uh, we would do a retaining wall, but we'd also add a timber rail uh, just to protect the edge of the, the the guardrail. So from that point of view, that level of the site is bigger by about 20 feet, uh, yeah. by 100 feet than it was in, in previous uh, site plans. And the only reason we're allowed to do that now is there's no proposed firing range. So this is where the firing range was going to be located because that's off site now. The site gets to extend back closer to the lower lot, but we'd have to just put a retaining wall. And I don't see any real major changes to the drainage network that's there other than just adjusting some manhole covers. Uh, the drainage pattern would, would be maintained that's, that's in that area. Hey, Bill, I got to drop off now at yeah. nine o'clock, so I apologize, but. Not at all, Michael, I'll give you a call afterwards. Uh, you have the KBA presentation as well, and uh, I'll give you a holler and uh, we'll talk uh, uh, about their presentation. Great, thank you, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Bill, take care. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Bill, Bill I, I have to jump too. I'm sorry. So. No, no, I understand. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any um, uh, other questions before we let Brian go? Okay, I'm going to jump too. All right, sir. Okay, so, thank yeah, you. Like, and I appreciate you putting in a space at the retaining wall for Leon's tomatoes and basil plants. That's very <laughs> important. Uh, you know, Leo was, uh, one of his ideas was to have a little tomato stand out in front of the police department to help offset the $27 million. And Leon, we appreciate that very much. Good luck. <laughs> Bye. All right, uh, who's presenting from KBA? Um, Castle Booze, there you are. Getting, getting booted up here. All right, guys. Welcome and thank you for your patience. We appreciate you uh, uh, coming back. I know it's, uh, as the uh, Grateful Dead would say, a long, strange trip and spin, but uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we all have your presentation. So the um, floor is yours. Are we on? Uh, we're not, we're almost on. You're on. Can you hear us? You can. Good. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, I'm Chuck Booz, and together with Eric Rossi, uh, Senior Landscape Architect with Castle Booz, we'll present our revised design for the uh, New Canaan Police Headquarters building. Uh, this new scheme uh, only differs from the previous scheme we presented on in May, uh, in that it, it incorporates the uh, 13 design criteria in whole or in part that was provided to us by Mr. Joe Zagorinsky uh, on uh, May 18th. Eric? Um, just just a second. Saw a little more, Chuck. I, I gotta <laughs> get the presentation up here. Let me see if Jim is here. Oh, here we go. Got it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Oh. 
Can you all see that? Yes. But we can't, we can't hear you now if you're speaking. Uh, we're, we're not. We're trying to figure this thing out. I'm looking for my. I got to get get my techie. All righty. Probably have it done while I'm out of the room. All right. Conversations and town meetings are now in person, Kevin, versus uh, Zoom. I think uh, probably 80%. Mm -hmm. Two thirds at least. Yep. Matt's on the way. It does save time for people. Yep. Apologize for this. Not at all, sir. Appreciate your time to uh, present to us. Well, we're more than happy to do that. I can tell you that. All right. So I think we got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Just moving very slow. Uh, so we'll start out with the site plan. Um, we, we tried to keep it simple as far as the site plan is concerned. Uh, it, the circulation is much like we have it now. We're preserving the existing visitor spaces out front. Um, we're still coming in where the, with the daycare, but one of our major uh, goals uh, with doing the site plan was fully separating the daycare and the housing parking from the police parking. Um, so in that regard, what we have is a wall that's coming along the lease line that's here, and then also extending over into the existing lower parking. What this does is it gives us more real estate at the upper level uh, for parking and circulation. Um, so we can get our, our flow in along here into the Sally Port. We have a canopy, um, a number of parking spaces, 16 spaces under the canopy, um, and then the parking along the back and the side. This preserves the seven spaces at the ambulance barn and the, um, and the, circulation space, back in space that's needed in front of the ambulance barn, and that exit out, um, back out onto South Avenue. Um, why this buys us some real estate is, is it gets us the, the aisle widths that we need for 90 degree parking. Also gives us a little space to get some uh, mechanical units on the ground level, um, a new generator especially, um, but this gives us the sally port, the canopy, some parallel parking along the daycare. Um, and this would be a, probably a six to eight foot wall. And what it does is totally separates the parking from the daycare and the housing. Um, as far as the daycare and the housing is concerned, we're preserving the space and the, and the circulation for their drop off that they currently have, giving them a couple more spaces where there's a cut through at the moment uh, on the existing site. And it also gives them some more spaces down below. Um, whether some of this space gets reused for police or it goes all the way to daycare is, is something open for discussion. Um, but this gives us about 54 total police spaces up top, which is short of your goal. 
um, but it's all we can get without really taking this lower parking and we're trying not to take all of that. Um, so that's the site. Um, pretty simple as far as going in and the sally port and the canopy. Uh, again, this preserves a lot of the circulation that you currently have on the site. Talk about elevation. Oh, elevation wise. Yeah. Um, so elevation, we're coming in in the main floor, the front, it's the same existing. We're, we're doing minimal work out front of the, the building. Out back, we're gonna lower this down with the lowering of the floor um, scheme that we have for this building. And because we're lowering all this back here, this wall gets a little lower back here. So this is only a, a six or an eight foot wall. Um, could be a standard um, unit wall, or it could be something more substantial like a concrete wall uh, in the end run. Good, thank you. It's just taken a while for the pages to turn for some reason. Uh, coming up with the uh, lower floor, uh, as we indicated the last time we presented, uh, it is our and design intention to uh, lower the uh, west side of the lower floor uh, to the uh, entry elevation of, of uh, a minus, an, an, a, the lowering that floor by approximately two feet. Now that will require some, uh, some underpinning. We know the existing boiler room is lower than the rest of the floor. So without uh, some destructive testing, we don't really know where the, um, uh, the actual foundation is. Uh, that's, that, that said, uh, we've done many buildings where we have to underpin uh, the uh, certain portions of the building and we, we, we don't find that uh, as being, but particularly, uh, uh, I, th I think it's really worth it to, to have a proper height in at least half of that basement. Uh, and uh, that, that's what we, uh, we, we really propose for this particular project. Uh, well, coming in, we have uh, uh, the, the, the two stair entrances. We have a new stair uh, up at the, um, uh, where the detention area is. That brings uh, uh, the officers into the building and uh, we have locker rooms, male and female, uh, to the left. Uh, uh, what we've done uh, with the, uh, the existing mechanical spaces, we've created an, an IT area there directly below where we propose to put the communications uh, uh, room uh, above. Uh, the elevator stays in place. We have some miscellaneous storage. We have uh, defense tactics and fitness and facility maintenance with uh, at least a, a, a 10 foot clear ceiling as opposed to uh, the current eight foot ceiling. Uh, we have a, a mechanical uh, uh, at the other end of the building, electrical sprinkler. Uh, and we've, we've done that for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're bringing in new services uh, because this is gonna be a, a 60 to 100 year old build, uh, year building and uh, you're gonna need new services anyway. It's also closer to the ambulance building. And we're not sure if uh, there's gonna be a, any connection or the ambulance building is indeed going to uh, function on its own in the future. Uh, beyond that, the new addition includes uh, 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 the Sally Port, of course. We have one and a half bays there and a utility bay. Uh, we have uh, some bulk storage uh, to, the, uh, to, to the right of the detention area and processing, uh, which is uh, uh, right off of the Sally Port, of course. Uh, and that really uh, uh, is the, the, the design concept for the, for the lower floor. Uh, all these spaces will be, of course, uh, designed to suit uh, once we have a chance to really meet with uh, the, the department and, and the various people that are going to be governing how these uh, spaces want to work. Next slide. Uh, on the main floor, we've retained the existing vestibule and uh, there's no difference 
in the appearance of the front of the building. Uh, and as I indicated to the north, we have uh, communications right off of the lobby adjacent to the uh, elevator. Uh, going in the other direction to the south, uh, we have a community and training room, EOC. Uh, now this is gonna, re we, we retain the, re the bearing wall uh, in, uh, the, in the lower floor, but here we're gonna structurally alter one of the bearing walls to uh, allow us to have a proper size community training uh, area. Uh, and uh, the ancillary spaces associated with the main lobby. Records is right off the main lobby as well where the existing communication space uh, is today. Uh, further uh, adjacent to that, we have the, the uh, report and ready room uh, roll call uh, going around uh, to the rear uh, evidence uh, and uh, a break room and a patio uh, for the, uh, you know, good weather usage uh, uh, of uh, some outdoor space. Uh, and of course, patrol is at the, uh, the that, that area right there is indicated by the arrow. Uh, any questions on uh, either floor to date? Um, how many uh, how many lockers and bathrooms, everything can you get like uh, in in the in the facilities for the men and the women? Go back. What's to the, the capacity other. down below? The capacity at, at this point in time will be worked out with uh, with, with the department. Uh, we haven't had a chance to uh, re really uh, work that out in detail. However, we know that there's uh, a need to have, uh, you know, a wall that's probably flexible. Uh, and we've done this in, in, in other projects where uh, we're able to incorporate additional lockers uh, depending on uh, the number of female and males uh, working in a department. Uh, and there'll of course be uh, some, you know, extra lockers for each. Now there's the, the, the corridor between the uh, weapons uh, armory and, and cleaning uh, can be relo relocated further down toward the new stair. Uh, and so we can pick up some additional space uh, if we need it in the locker rooms. But I, I, I can't give you an exact count because it's not worked out, but okay. we know it can be. Chuck, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, is it, the fitness room seems a little bit undersized. Would it be possible to add some square footage to that from the facility maintenance? There's department? no question. Of, there's no question about it. Okay. That that area is going to be completely flexible uh, because it's all going to be reconstructed and have a proper height. Okay, that's great. Next one. Yeah, next one. Uh, okay, now we're up on uh, on the upper floor. Uh, we. I come up in the elevator and we're into the secure area where we have the department administration and we have a future expansion space uh, uh, off of that area. That's to be determined. Beyond that is investigation uh, and a simulator room uh, for tactics uh, over on at the, the, the lower left-hand corner. Uh, uh, again, the exact nature of those spaces will be worked out uh, after we have a chance to meet with uh, the department. The building, is, uh, we, we, we presented these sketches before. We, we really didn't change them because the, the design of the building didn't change that much. But you can go right through it. That's the view. This is the view from, uh, from the rear. Ambul ambulance building is on the left. Now we're looking at it uh, from the community, the, the, the adjacent daycare center. Again, it's daycare center view. And that's the view coming down from the north uh, to the south. The uh, concept of where the mechanical is gonna be, uh, we have some roof space uh, if, if we need it, we have some room on a site if we need it. And also uh, you have a very voluminous attic space up there. Uh, we placed the mechanical systems uh, in attics 
or uh, whatever you want to call the space. Uh, it really is an attic, uh, and but there's plenty of room in there. Uh, and, and currently, and the, the, the project is, uh, is, is out to bid, the Quincy uh, facility in Quincy, Mass, uh, has all the mechanical and the uh, attic space. For the outdoor uh, mechanicals, what roof would you use? Because I noticed there's a lot of windows looking out on some of that roof space. I was just trying to picture myself where, right. uh, uh, where you would put it. Well, uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to design a system where we can put the air handling portion of uh, the uh, uh, requirement for, for, for HVAC uh, in the attic space uh, with soundproofing, of course, and we'd have you know, louvers or dormers uh, to provide the outside air intake. We see that attic as being a, a warm attic as, as opposed to a cold attic like it is now. Uh, so uh, that, that would have to, uh, that would have to be engineered, but uh, it, it, it should work. I got a question. All right. Are there any uh, are there any questions about uh, you know this is uh, uh, it, it it really is essentially what we presented uh, May, May 12th with the exceptions of those 13 uh, criteria and unfortunately we didn't hit uh, the requirement for for parking because that previous presentation had a deck and uh, the desire was to eliminate the uh, parking structure. But that doesn't, uh, you have the spaces in the rear, you just haven't included them in your account, right? The adjacent to the cottage? We didn't include the cottage parking at all. Yeah. No, I mean, so if you add that. that cottage parking, uh, we're probably very close to the 70. You've got your 70 if you use the cottage parking. Yeah. All right. What's the total square footage, actual usable square footage? Well, we got we got a little bit of expansion space. Uh, uh, it, it's about, uh, I, I believe it's tw uh, 28 to 29. Uh, again, that's that's easily massageable, and it depends on uh, you know how the square footage ultimately is uh, calculated. Uh, you know, in industry, they usually calculate it from the inside wall, uh, and uh, but in all practicality, people generally do it from the uh, outside face of wall. So it. it Usable spaces inside face of wall, uh, total space would be uh, outside. And, uh, you know, we got between, right now we're between 28 and 29,000. Other questions for uh, Chuck and KB18? General, we appreciate it very much. Thank you for uh, going back with uh, and, and reworking it based on uh, our newer criteria, and we appreciate the uh, the efforts. Quite good. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Let's see if we get our screen back. There we go. There we go. Kevin, has there been any new discussion with uh, the cottage, the EMTs, or the, the senior living there? Uh, have there been any uh, communications uh, between uh, the town and any of those guys? Have they reached out in any way, shape, or form? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Because when we talk about uh, cottage parking, I just, you know, I don't uh, No, the, the point is that's currently police parking, and I didn't quite understand why they why they subtracted it because it's still there available as Brian's plan, you know, uses it for police. Yeah. 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 I think uh, that, that was just a mistake. I agree with Kevin that, that all, that all space has been used for police since we paved it for police about 12 or 14 years ago. Exactly. Okay. And that was, uh, that's why, that's why I asked. So we're, we're all clear on that. Yeah. There, there is a problem uh, there that, uh, that, that would have to be addressed. I, I don't think you can actually do what they did, which is, uh, elevate uh, the half of that parking lot. The reason is there's a major detention basin underneath uh, the grass just adjacent to that. It's between the retain retaining wall that Brian showed and the parking. And so I don't think they, it cannot be done the way they uh, outlined it without major site work. 
So there, there's a there's a rule, as you may know, that if you when you pave something, you have to retain the water on site. So that that was done with the with the detention basin, which is uh, at the base of the slope, mm -hmm. uh, and it can't be you can't pave it over. Yeah, I, I think if you guys don't mind, I think we should spend maybe five, 10 minutes on the pluses and minuses of both of these plans, even though that's not what we're going to do. That's not our purpose today, frankly, but while it's fresh in our mind, just so we're clear on some points that we may have had uh, questions about, um, because going forward, again, we have two decisions to make, uh, which is, you know, picking an architect and uh, which, you know, path we're going to proceed on, which is town hall solution or, uh, or, or not, and how we present that to the, to the town body. So that's uh, the, the, the core of what we need to, to do here in the next few weeks. But while these presentations are fresh, is there any discussion amongst us, uh, amongst ourselves, uh, that you guys want to bring up questions that you're unclear of, things like that? I think it's, it's Paul. I think that the um, that uh, training room that Brian presented with the eight foot ceiling, I just don't think that works. You know, it just seems really, really tight. Well, that's, I mean, that's a good point. And that's one of the things I wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring up flow and the ceiling height, the basement. Uh, so, and, and I'm just going to make an assumption and, and Joe and the, the guys who know more about this stuff can correct me. I, I think that whatever plan or architect we decide to use, if we say we don't like an eight foot training center ceiling, um, you know, whether it's Brian plan or the KBA plan, we could, we could dig down the basement and make that. Uh, That's right. That's uh, right. Is, that, is that correct? And then it's a question of whether you want to pay for that. It doesn't get value and engineered out and, you know, you know, the other, the other compromises that get made when you uh, when you get surprised at the final bill is that kind of fair, Joe? Uh, yeah, that, that's fair. I would just I would just note that there would probably be a, if you just did that one section, there would probably be a ramp down into that particular area. Mm -hmm. But that's not um, that's very doable if you just wanted yeah. to do the training area. Mm -hmm. I think when, when we can come back and work out details of the plan later. I think the bigger yeah. question maybe to be uh, is to reverse it and talk about whether we the town wants to spend the additional whatever the number is 46 million uh, and that after make that decision then the decision is is how to refine whichever design we're going with and that can be done after we select an architect right i just want people to be clear on what they're actually getting for the potential four to six just so that they have um you know, an understanding, you know, whether it's the traffic flow, whether it's things like that, whether it's something that uh, they, uh, they have any questions out about. Okay. I think cl clearly you get more, if you spend more money, you get more. <laughs> yeah. You get more flexibility and you get uh, uh, definite improvements. And right. so the, we, the first question is, uh, you know, and uh, are any of our town council members on here? I don't, I don't see uh Mike Morrow? Right. Mike Morrow is on, on, I believe. Okay. Uh, with the first question is, do whatever the number is, hard cost 15 versus 20 or 14 versus 19 or 15 versus whatever it is, uh, what, what the committee wants to recommend uh, uh, taking the, the lower cost solution as being the best value for the town or the town or additional, additional money. This is Mike Morrow. You know, really the town council really have to understand is is that money worth it the extra whatever four to five million uh you know because like i said the last time we met the bonding resolution well the bonding amount that we approved was i think around 19 million uh you know if we're going to now be told it's you know closer to 25 million that's a lot uh, a quite a quite a big jump for us to have to approve so we really need to understand. I agree. You know, you can go, you get more if you pay more, but do we really need that more? Is it vital? Is it necessary for all the law enforcement function uh, that the police need from right now through the next 60 to 90 years? Um, and I don't want us to make the wrong decision and not have the capacity in the future. I mean, if we have to pay for it now, then perhaps it's worth it. Michael, but would you really would you... understanding is this? 
what's the value Michael, here? Do we need it? Michael, would you recommend that the building Michael, committee, would you recommend that the building when we when we present it to you guys, present both uh, both uh, plans, if you will, a, a town hall uh, plan budget. Um, and try to articulate what that would mean. And uh, one, uh, call it the original Brian uh, plan of uh, refurbishing the existing uh, space and, uh, and what that would entail and, and present them both. Uh, or do you think the town council would prefer us to just pick one uh, as a committee and, and move that forward? I think uh, the, town, the town council would prefer having the built police building committee make a recommendation as to what they believe is the appropriate way to go based upon, you know, it's due diligence, it's discussions, all, you know, speaking with the stakeholders and all the review, but have a presentation on both. Because I know my colleagues will all say, that's great, police building committee, we get it, but I have my questions that I want to ask. So I think it's appropriate to have a recommendation from the police building committee and then a presentation of both these plans. The other thing that I think will be quite helpful on understanding at least that extra four to five million is, is a very brief bullet point, you know, uh, document that says, look, here's what the extra four to five million gets uh, the town. Uh, you know, because, you know, we don't have a lot of people with expertise in architectural design. Uh, and when you start throwing a lot of spreadsheets out, it's, it's just unhelpful. I mean, I just, even in my professional life, so something to really say, look, here's the extra four to five mil and here's where it's going, you know, boom, 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 this is what you get. And then we can have that sent to the town council prior to any presentation of a recommendation and also the, uh, rec uh, the presentation of the two competing plans. That's very helpful, Michael. Thank sure. you. Can I ask? I want to ask another question and maybe I missed it and perhaps it's not on our agenda now, but uh, we can keep it on, uh, on our plate. The, the training, the education training center, you know, especially in light of, you know, the Uvalde shooting and I've had some discussions with the chief. Uh, I think now more, more than ever, uh, we really need to make sure that that's moving parallel. Uh, I know we're you know, grappling with the, the major issue of what to do with the current location, but you know, I'd like to, I don't know how to advance this, but, you know, do we have even any plans in the, you know, in, in, in the early stages being drafted for what that would look like and any discussion uh, and potential location? I don't want that to get pushed off to the side because on town council, I can just tell you a lot of parents are, you know, asking questions. What's, you know, what's the PDs in the towns and the board of, and the uh, school districts? Um, resources and capacity and planning, you know, where there's a lot of questions being asked right now. And I think at some point, you know, there may be a public forum on it, but that ties in with the training center that's needed in my opinion now more than ever. So where, where are we at with that? Kevin, you want to give us a little update? We've been working on it. We've got some uh, loca two locations identified and uh, we, but we have several issues we have to work through as to feasibility of those locations. So, um, and also we are you know talking to four other departments about joining us because this would be a, a rifle pistol range and the the other departments in the neighborhood need rifle um and uh so we're hoping to put that plan together with with four other departments is there anything going on with um uh wilton or the state what's anything new any new Actually, things there? Yeah, you know, when i had my west Cod meeting last week the uh the new town location really isn't progressing and um and wilton is working primarily on their building their building and um i think kind of sidetracked their their they 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 would look to either join the new new town uh regional if it gets if it moves forward or have a secondary regional in in uh in wilton um so okay. right, should we can we engage an architect for this training center now that's probably not Rather a bad idea paul we, we we talked about we talked about getting some more um uh, professional advice on the, on yeah, the yeah. building yeah yeah because my all i understand it you know is sort of a large box and that's that's the limit of my well, there's really two, on this, you know, really, but, but there's really two primary issues: a location and mm -hmm. and the and the financial. You know, uh, yep. it's very expensive 
to, to do a large facility and you got to have at least a couple other two or three other departments with us if we're going to make it. And right now we're carrying what a two and a half million dollar holding. Uh, is that fair? It's probably more than that. Yeah. But we're, it's it's 2.4 2. plus the markups. Mm. For, for a pistol and rifle range, basically a, uh, uh, a, a complete solution, if you will. So what we're carrying is the previously designed number. We're carrying that budget forward. We know that we don't know what it's going to be, and we'll adjust it when we know what it's going to be. But unless... So I'm sorry. So depending upon the design of the uh, training center, do does the need for any of the spaces that we've designed in the this current police building change? No. Like so, you still need the well, defensive tactics room in the police building, no matter what's in the training center. Yeah, you know, the training center is a pistol mm -hmm. uh, rifle okay. range with, with with the ability to bring an automobile in, which makes it kind of a, a training facility for police. Um, but you really don't have any, I think, Paul, you've been thinking that there are others, other training aspects in that building, but we've, we haven't been talking about that, right, Joe? Well, see, that's, that's why that's I, correct. I, I we, left it, we left everything in the police building that could be- Yeah, that's why I like to engage somebody who's actually done some of these and maybe we can take some of it from you know one location to the other and possibly some of the storage you know, of some of all this stuff that we need to leave at the headquarters, we could put over there. Yeah, uh, Paul, I'm not aware of anybody. As well. Yeah. You got to investigate that, Joe. I'm yeah. not aware of anybody that's made a, a yeah. more than a range um, for this training facility combining other training. Yeah, I saw one down in Texas. It was quite, it was large. I mean, it's massive, but that's not quite what we can do. But uh, it was their whole training. Everything was in that center. Minimize our maximum regret, Paul. We're in the baddest box. We we don't want to we don't want to try to do too much and swing and a miss. I know. So, so yeah, yeah, I'd like to comment on that. My opinion is uh, nothing can be taken out of our existing facility or the proposed design, and the uh, the range uh, training education center would be exclusively a pistol rifle area. Nothing more than that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Leah. Um, I have a hard stop in five minutes, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to know what what we wanted. If we were taking, uh, you know, sort of going around getting opinions about where we should be or what our next meeting was going to be, how we want to take it forward. Well, uh, I think we need a special meeting, uh, Penny, because I don't think we can wait until July, right? Uh, right, that's what I was thinking. And, um, and that special meeting should have votes, I, I believe, so we can uh, get this forward to the town bodies uh, sooner rather than later. The two votes really would be, uh, you know, pick an architect and to uh, um, pick a, and, and going with, with Mike Morrow's comments, uh, pick a plan, if you will, and, uh, but be prepared to present both to the town bodies um, and uh, also presenting uh, what you're getting for, you know, incremental, you know, five-ish million dollars and also uh, present to the town bodies that we do have a placeholder in our plan for of $2.4 million for a police training center, which as a building committee, uh, we'll reiterate where you are 100% committed to uh, come hell or high water, we, we need it. Um, and if anything, I think, uh, you know, Mike's comments, Michael's comments are, are appropriate that the demand for that has only increased in the last few months, um, you know, not, not decreased from the, from the town perspective. So uh, that's kind of where, where my head is. Um, and uh, What about a special meeting in the following, what you agreeing with you, how about a special meeting on the 23rd to, to work on those two problems? So I'm, I'm flying, to what what time on the 23rd i'm flying to ireland that day well how about on but the actually i'm flying in the evening so i could meet in the morning how about on the 22nd oh she said she can do the 23rd in the morning she's doing the right first eye. thing in the morning i think it's an evening flight so mm -hmm. so 23rd works for for penny works for me works for yeah, me yeah we're we're around yep okay so um 
We'll schedule a special meeting for June 23rd, and Joe and I will work on the agenda, but uh, plan to uh, have uh, at least two votes on it, right, for uh, pick our architect, to pick our uh, plan that we're going to move forward to the, with the town bodies. Uh, but as a group, I think it's uh, uh, the town body should be, uh, you know, aware of, of both plans, whichever one uh, we don't choose as well. Because I don't think we'll be unanimous necessarily anyway. Is that, uh, is that fair? <clears throat> Sounds good. Kevin, okay. you good? Yep. Okay. So kudos to the working committee for getting us this new presentation. Absolutely. I thought it was extremely helpful. I thought I really understood what you could get, um, you know, from uh, the, sort of the town hall take off the back add on, uh, you know, which I previously hadn't. So I appreciate all the work that went into that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Penny, for saying that. It's, uh, I think they took a quantum leap forward with what uh, our understanding as a committee of, uh, of uh, you know, what we're looking at. And uh, hats off to really framing the question the way they did to help us all. Bill, you're talking about 8 o'clock on the 23rd? Yes. Okay. Michael, did you uh, want to chime in? Nope, that's it. Okay. All right. Any, uh, anything else? Okay. Thanks, Bill. All right. Motion to adjourn. Good. Adjourn. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.